Hello everybody and welcome to this video where we're going to do a two-year review on my geothermal system originally installed by Dandelion. Uh, however, they have switched to different hardware. Uh, I am using a water furnace and now they have their own um, their own heat pumps now. So it might not be exactly identical, but it's probably close enough for the numbers for you guys. Anyways, going into the last year, um, one of the things that kind of isn't great about this Symphony interface is that it only allows you to see the last year of data. Uh, but we'll go ahead and review them and just know that I also created a program that logs the daily stats. So I actually do have the last two years worth of data. Uh, but we'll start here first to kind of get a, a general overview from this perspective. Uh, we can see here that for the last 12 months in cooling, um, I have used uh, just over a megawatt hour, 1,161 1, kilowatt hours uh, for cooling. And for heating, I've used 6,281 kilowatt hours, or just over 6 megawatt hours uh, for heating. Uh, so actually, it wasn't bad this last year. Um, once you see us compare it to the year before, you can see that we actually had a pretty mild winter this year. Uh, so these numbers are actually fairly low. Um, uh, my expectation was that those would be higher, but it's great that it wasn't. Um, and you can see the, the trends here uh, throughout the winter. We had high, we had an unusually high January, we had an unusually warm January this year. I'm not sure you know, what happened there, but I looked back at the data and I, sure enough, both in the data that I logged and the data here and in the um, logging of the temperatures, the daily temperatures, January was just that warm and we just didn't need that much heating then. Um, so that, it was an interesting thing to see there, that, that little dip that happened. Um, but yep, that's an overview of, of uh, what the energy use has been for the last year. Let's go to my power spread. Uh, this here is showing the data that I've been logging. Uh, and I'm going to link to this, uh, this sheet in the description below this video. So that way anybody can go ahead and go in here and look at the numbers. Uh, there is a tab down here for data. And that's just the raw data itself. These are just graphs that represent that data. Uh, and you can see the difference in years here. The first year that I had the system, um, we used 7 megawatt hours of electricity. And in the last year of the system, I've used four megawatt hours of electricity. Now that sounds off from the screens we just saw, and that's because Symphony shows the last 12 months. It doesn't show it in year groupings. And since I bought the system and turned it on at the very end of October, that's how I got, you know, I'm starting 11.17 and going to 10.18, then going from 11.18 to 10.19. Now we have an apples to apples comparison here. Um, here you can see overall by month, uh, and this is pretty interesting as well. We can see how when we started off, we started off in a very cold winter initially, and the winter just kept dragging on for a lot long, a lot longer than normal. And went right through, we were heating right through April, um, and actually didn't turn off the heat until almost, uh, almost July. I'm sorry, um, almost June. Um, we did start cooling in the same time frame. Uh, our cooling numbers are fairly low. And then this is this past winter, and as you can see, this past winter was much more mild, uh, and it was much shorter as well. It didn't have nearly the same impact that the prior winter did. Um, and once again, my, my cooling numbers were pretty low overall for the system. Uh, the blue is the cooling, the red is the heating, and in the back there, the black is the overall. Uh, so when there's a crossover like this, you can kind of see that one jumping up. Um, here is our heating by month. Uh, you can see the drastic difference between 2018 and 2019. Uh, looking back, once again, it just seems to be that during the 2018 winter, we had not only cold, but we had a sequential number of days that were cold, which really seems to have a big impact. And we can kind of dig into that a little bit later on in the video here. Um, <clears throat> but... Uh, in 2018, there was, I believe, about two weeks where we're actually in the single digits in December and in January. So that's kind of why these numbers were so high. The more sequential days you have, 
Uh, with the geosystem, it does seem to increase the amount of overall heating required. It needs to do more work because the ground isn't able to recover as quickly. Um, but if you have a good spread, like we had some, the, the average for January in 2018 or in 2019, uh, was almost the same. It was only a, a degree difference when I looked at the climate stats. Uh, but the difference was that this, in January, we had an intermix of warm days and very cold days. Whereas this, we had warm days at the beginning and the end of the year, at uh, the beginning and end of the month. And then in the middle, we had a really strong cold spell for a long period of time. So it's kind of interesting to see those numbers span out that way. Our cooling numbers are here. They're pretty even. Uh, the summers were pretty much identical in both cases. Uh, and they're, they're fairly low. Um, they're a lot less than what I was spending on the three AC units that I had uh, in the house before. I had three window units. And um, our, our electric bills in the summertime were actually pretty high. They were almost the same as they were in the, uh, in the winter. So that was really interesting that that happened. Uh, once again, I said that you, you guys will have this access to this. You can review this. Um, stepping out of just geothermal, this is a, one of the goals of me getting geothermal was to be able to be a net zero household. And basically what I want to do is I want to be able to see um, this top this top grid here to be able to be this black line just never show up. The black line shows me that I had to purchase electricity from the grid. Um, so you can see here in the winter times and in the summer times, I usually don't have to purchase any electricity from the grid. Um, and I'm hoping right now that this next next couple of years, we're gonna be able to see this black line either show up much, much, much lower or not at all. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, really it's gonna depend on the winter. If I have a winter like we did in 2018, that's unlikely to occur this year. Um, but if we have a winter like we did in 2019, uh, it's probably going to be, uh, it's probably, it's, I will probably be able to make it through the whole winter without ever needing to purchase any electricity at all from the grid. Uh, this here shows um, the, uh, the total power consumed versus the um, amount we got from solar and the amount that we got from um from the grid itself. Uh, so you can see in the summertime, we got a lot more of our overall electricity from the solar systems and and a lot less from the grid. And then obviously in the winter that flips pretty significantly. Uh, in March, we actually had a new solar array installed. Uh, it's a ground mount system. Uh, it's like 10, 0.5 or somewhere in that area, 10, 10, a little over 10 kilowatt system. Um, and it's been awesome. Uh, it, had, it had a bit of a hiccup here. You can kind of see where it was trending up quickly and then it kind of flatlined for a bit. Uh, there was some problems with overheating in the inverter, uh, but they go ahead, they went ahead and fixed that. And then as of April, it just kind of took off like we would have expected to. And um, as a result, you know, prior summer, we didn't really bank any electricity. But in this year, we were able to bank quite a bit of electricity. And I'm hoping that that's going to carry us through the winter time. We shall see. The consumption source breakdown shows um, overall power used for the month and where that power went. Right now, the only thing I can break out is a geothermal because that's the only thing that I have logged data for. However, I am working towards getting those things broken out more. As you can see, there are, there are times when I use a significant amount of electricity, like here in January of 2019, but I don't know where that electricity went. It's probably hot water, it's probably the EVs. Those are probably the biggest two ones that I went to. And I'm fine I went to those things. I just want to know. You know, I want to know where that electricity is going. Uh, so I'm looking to uh, install a system right now that will go ahead and break those down further for me. Hopefully in the future, I'll have that kind of data available to myself. And here on the data tab, you can see um, the raw data itself. So if you're interested in seeing what the values were for you know, geothermal, how much I spent each month, you can see them here if you don't want to look at the grids. Okay, so one other thing I'll mention is that I actually have a database as well. I'll probably link to that one in the video as well, so you can go ahead and data mine all you want. Um, that database contains daily values for usage 
as well as um, momentary data uh, every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes I was logging a whole bunch of data that was coming from the geothermal system, as much as I can pull from it as I can. So that's really some interesting things in there that if, if you really want to kind of dig in and, and see what kind of data you can get out, you can get things like what is the temperature of the ground loop at, the peri at certain periods of time. And in, in this graph right here, I'm kind of representing what the impact is of extreme cold days in sequence. So at the bottom, you can see that we have um, all the dates listed. And then right here is a great example. Um, here we had a long spurt of very cold days. It was a couple weeks. And a couple times, for a few days at least, we were well down into the negative temperatures. Um, this red line here indicates the use of auxiliary heat. So that's resistance electrical heat, not actually using the heat pump. Um, that had to kick in because the ground loop got cold enough uh, where we couldn't extract heat from the ground anymore and the backup system kicked on as a result. Um, it's great that that has that there and you know that that definitely does make the cost for the system go up uh, but it's not significant enough where I was concerned about this at all. Uh, this this spike meant about an extra six dollars uh, that month uh, for for electricity as a result. Another thing that I've been kind of plotting here is the humidity inside the house as well. Um, just because it's been very dry in the house during the winter times, uh, and I just want to kind of see how how that plotted out throughout the year. Um, that's something that's on me still. I actually haven't done that. I know in my last video I said that I need to go ahead and tighten up my, my attic, and I need to tighten up my doors, and I haven't done any of that work yet. So the last two years of data are with no home improvements to the, the house's um, energy profile. Okay, guys, um, I don't have anything else. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments, and I will talk to you guys later.